triacyl glycerol. So, talking to the properties of triacyl glycerol, okay, hydrolysis. So, when triacyl glycerols undergo enzymatic hydrolysis, that's what our food consists of lipids, okay, which are mainly of triacyl glycerol, how it will be digested. So, once they enter into the digestive system because of acidic nature in the stomach, they will be broken down uh, to fatty acids and glycerol, okay, and then only they will be absorbed into the intestinal human, okay. And again, for the transport purpose in intestinal human, they again repack to triacyl glycerols. Then only they packed into the lipoproteins and they will be uh, transported from uh, uh, intestinal human to liver through portal circulation. Okay, they will reach to the liver. From liver, based on the body demands, it will be distributed. Okay, so the process of hydrolyze, hydrolysis, catalyzed by the group of enzyme lipases. Okay which are very very important for the digestion of fat in the uh, gastrointestinal tract and fat mobilization from the adipose tissue. So, lipases are present in GIT, lipases are present in uh, adipose tissue, okay, and in the uh, arteries, in the circulation. So, all they are ready to digest the TAG, okay. So, coming to the saponification, Saponification is nothing but the hydrolysis of TAG by alkali. That means when you are adding an alkali substance to the triacyl glycerol, okay, it produces glycerol and soaps. It is known as saponification. Okay, when you treat a triacyl glycerol by alkali, it produces both soap and glycerol. Okay, this is the principle behind making of a soap. So that's what uh, when you are oily, okay, uh, if you are not taken bath for two days, your skin will be like all oils, it's like dust, everything will be accumulated over your skin. So then what you do, you will take a bath and you will rub soap all over your body. That means all the uh, oiliness you want to get rid of, it will be gone. So the soap is nothing but which contains alkali, okay. So which get rid of all the oiliness from the skin, okay. So triacyl glycerol when react with alkali, it produces glycerol and fatty acids forms the corresponding soaps. So rancidity, rancidity is a term used to represent deterioration of fat and oils resulting in unpleasant taste. So if you open up any oil product, if you keep outside, okay, or exposing to the sunlight, open air, okay, and the lipid which is present in that oil or fat, okay, which got uh, like, uh, you, if you say example of like uh, butter, we have uh, collected butter from the curd, okay, or the buttermilk, you kept outside, it will stink. Why? Because the lipids which are present in the butter get react with the oxygen in the air and they start get deteriorating and try to develop unpleasant taste and odor, okay. Rancidity means you should uh, keep in mind deterioration of fat, that means degradation of fat in developing unpleasant odor and taste, okay. Fats containing unsaturated fatty acids are more susceptible for rancidity. Okay, that means so the oils, okay, which are having uh, vegetable oils, groundnut oil, or like uh, other oils, okay, uh, which are all unsaturated, uh, okay, they are all more susceptible in development of this rancidity. Okay, and rancidity occurs when fats and oils are exposed to air, as I said, when they are exposed to air, moisture, light, bacteria. So, all these are the reasons behind rancidity. Okay. And there are types of rancidity, hydrolytic rancidity, oxidative rancidity and the reason behind hydrolytic rancidity is a partial hydrolysis of TAG by bacterial enzymes. Okay, when particular lipid okay, or TAG act over by the bacteria, it comes under category hydrolytic rancidity. Oxidative rancidity means oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids. Okay, when they get exposed to oxygen, they undergo oxidation and uh, they uh, deteriorate to develop unpleasant taste and odor. Okay, and uh, rancid fats and oils are unsuitable for human consumption. Once they undergo the process of rancidity, humans cannot utilize those lipids or TAG triacylglycerols. Okay, they are not good for health. So antioxidants. So to prevent the process of rancidity. Okay, all commercial oils are like, uh, now nowadays you can see the vegetable oils or the cooking oils, whenever uh, they, like, they say like antioxidant uh, mixed oils, okay. So, what is the purpose behind adding antioxidant means? Antioxidants prevent the oxidative rancidity in, in the TAG, okay, and they restore the act natural activity of TAG, okay, and prevents the rancidity, okay. Antioxidant prevent the oxidative rancidity, 
okay and uh, trace amounts of antioxidants uh, known antioxidants are tocopherols vitamin e hydroquinone gallic acid and alpha naphthol whenever uh, if you are going through any like a uh, composition uh, components of uh, any vegetable oil on the box you just go through composition of them what are the things they have added uh, in place of antioxidant like uh, vitamin e hydroquinone gallic acid okay and uh, alpha uh, alpha naphthol okay for commercial preparation lipid peroxidation so when this uh, lipid is degrading in a biological system okay at cellular level that is known as lipid peroxidation in the living cells lipids undergo oxidation to produce peroxides and free radicals and this process is a unstoppable one it's a cyclic chain okay lipid peroxidation is a cyclic chain in cell membrane as we all know cell membrane is made up of lipid bilayer okay they are nothing but fatty acids okay so when these fatty acids undergoing peroxidation so one fatty acid undergoes uh, peroxidation means it will start uh, damaging the other fatty acid and it is like continuous cycle okay so this is very dangerous condition lipid peroxidation so that's why once any fatty acid attacked by the um, uh, peroxide particles so they produce free radicals and further they damage the tissue okay these free radicals are believed to cause inflammatory diseases okay they are believed to cause inflammatory diseases cancer and atherosclerosis so it is fortunate that cell possess antioxidant uh, antioxidants such as vitamin e okay we do have potent phytos okay as they are having peroxides okay oxidants we do have antioxidants antioxidants are potent fighters against the oxidants the potent antioxidant we do have in our cellular mechanisms that is vitamin e urate and superoxide dismutase they are the enzymes okay to prevent the lipid peroxidation so test to check purity of fats and oils how to because nowadays in newspapers we will be seeing like uh, uh, vigilance department has caught some go down at the outskirts of the city like they are making uh, uh, they are adulterating the natural oils with animal oils oils which are preparing from the bones of the animals okay so like this to check whether the oil or fat what we are consuming is whether the quality wise is a pure or not there are several test okay so what are those we'll see one by one iodine number okay in the first one in the purity check of fats and oils to measure that is iodine number so how you define iodine number okay it is defined as the number of grams of iodine absorbed by 100 grams of fat or oil okay the number of grams of iodine absorbed by 100 grams of fat or oil and what is the use of this iodine number so wherever there is unsaturation so we are all know so saturated fatty acids unsaturated fatty acids so if that oil is having more uh, unsaturated fatty acids the more iodine we require okay the absorbance of iodine will be more if it is having more saturated fatty acid the less iodine will be absorbed okay so the main purpose of this iodine number is to know the relative unsaturation of fatty uh, fats and is directly proportional to the content of unsaturated fatty acids okay the lower the iodine number lesser the degree of unsaturation the higher the iodine number higher the degree of unsaturation so i have given examples in this slide you see here coconut oil the iodine number is 7 to 10 and butter is having 25 to 28 palm oil 45 to 55 olive oil 80 to 85 groundnut oil 85 to 100 and cotton seed oil 100 to 110 okay sunflower oil 125 to 135 these are the normal uh, ranges of id number for these oils if these numbers are going above or low above uh, than this reference range you can think of that there is adulterate uh, these oils are adulterated next is saponification number so like iodine number saponification number also be defined as the number of milligrams so there in iodine number number of grams but in saponification number it is milligrams the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide okay the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide required to hydrolyze one gram of fat or oil okay here there is absorbance property here we are breaking the fat or oil okay the number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide to hydrolyze one gram of fat or oil okay so what it will do it measures the average molecular size of fatty acid present that means with this you can say whether the 
the fat or oil made up of long chain fatty acids or medium chain fatty acids or long chain uh, short chain fatty acids okay that means the value is higher for fats containing short chain fatty acids and the value is lesser for the fats which contain longer chain fatty acids okay for human fat the saponification number is 195 to 200 for butter it is 230 to 240 and coconut oil it is 250 to 260 so the next one is third one richard misel number okay and how it is going to be defined the number of milliliters of 0.1 n sodium hydroxide required to neutralize okay 5 grams of uh, fat okay number of milliliters of 0.1 normal normality sodium hydroxide required to completely neutralize this soluble volatile fatty acids which are distilled from 5 grams of fat and what is the purpose of this ritual meter number so this richard missile number useful in measuring the purity of butter whether that butter is adulterated or not uh, you can check by using richard missile number and the next one acid number okay this acid number is also defined as milligrams of potassium hydroxide required to completely neutralize free fatty acids present in one gram of fat or oil okay once again repeating number of milligrams of potassium hydroxide required completely to neutralize free fatty acids that are present in one gram of fat or oil okay so oils with increased acid number are unsafe so nowadays we don't know like what type of oil we are consuming so to avoid that if you are check that particular oil with the acid number okay so higher the acid number higher the unsafe okay so if acid number of particular oil is uh, higher we cannot consume that oil okay chemical or bacterial contamination also you can check with this acid number